actually, I'm going to crack on Pete if you don't mind, because I've got I've got Lord Rob, Robin Renwick on the line, who is a, um, a former ambassador to the United States. And if you would, Lord Renwick, your immediate reaction to the news that your successor Kim Darrick has, has has just resigned. Well, really good for him. That was a very brave and courageous decision and absolutely the right thing to do. I mean, it's no use pretending that after having had all his confidential dispatches leaked, including all his comments about the president, that he could go on doing his job in Washington. So all this stuff we were hearing last night and yesterday about how he should carry on for another six months was frankly absurd. He wasn't going to be able to do his job. He wasn't going to be able to meet the president or any senior figure in the administration. So what was he going to do? So well done, Sir Kim. I mean, but, you know, what this shows more than ever is that the leak inquiry in this case uh, doesn't want, must not be one of these, oh, yes, well, we tried, but we couldn't find out who did its things. This needs to be a proper forensic investigation including looking at people's iPhones and, you know, and records of every kind to find out who did this, because this was a really serious breach affecting the ability of the ambassador in Washington or any other ambassador to communicate confidentially with the prime minister and the secretary of state. And it is a clear breach of the Official Secrets Act, if possible. Somebody needs to go to jail for this. I, we will, I'm going to return to that element in, in just a second. But before that, I think I understand why you've greeted Kim Derrick's decision so so warmly. Could you explain where you derive your confidence that this would have been his decision? Well, I'm, I'm certain it was his decision. We had the Foreign Secretary yesterday uh, saying he should carry on and he had his full support and so on. Well, I, I said when I was asked about this hmm. yesterday that if I was Sir Kim... I would not want to carry on. Uh, I would say I, I'm going, you know, because how can he fulfil his role as an ambassador if he can't see the president or any cabinet mm. ministers or the chairman of the Joint Chiefs or the national security adviser? What's he going to do? Go to cocktail parties or what? So good for Sir Kim. I really admire his decision. That's exactly what I would have done in his place. And, and yet it, it, it does rather raise the spectre of a diplomatic appointment being scuppered by a foreign leader, which is somewhat at odds with... No, good. This diplomatic appointment was not scuppered by a foreign leader. It was scuppered by a leaker. But if if Donald Trump had come out... Forgive forgive me for interrupting. I just want to clarify my question. If Donald Trump had come out and said, well, of course, we know that diplomats send messages both positive and negative back to their home countries all the time you you know to be flippant for a moment you should see some of the stuff my ambassador said if if in other words he dealt with it like an adult the situation wouldn't have escalated if somebody said that you personally yes were inept and radiating in the security happens every day robin you'd be just as cross about this as donald trump and you mustn't be surprised at his reaction and if it had been bill clinton or if it had been George Bush Sr., they'd have been just as cross about it. How many eyes would have seen these documents, in your opinion? I appreciate we can't go definitive on this, but, but, I mean... Not, yeah, well, not all that many. I mean, any any nonsense that this was done by the Russians or something is complete rubbish. It was done by an insider. Uh, The Russians would have to have access to all our diplomatic cables to produce this little treasure trove. Mm -hmm. So the leaker in you saw this what case came out really on WikiLeaks. needs to feel... You saw what really came out on WikiLeaks. They, I mean, yes, they, had, I they had access to confidential films that had been taken by the US military. Yes. The idea that, that they couldn't hack British tre- government emails... That was also treasonable, and if Mr. Ersang finds himself back in the US, he will go to jail, mm. which is what he should do. But we're talking about this case, and the person who did this, causing Derek to resign, not Trump the leaker, Hmm. needs to feel the hot breath of an investigation on his or her neck. And what criteria will the Prime Minister employ now in looking for a successor? And how will any successor ever have the confidence to send honest assessments back to Britain if, if they know that their position could be rendered untenable by those honest assessments being made public? Well, yeah, that is that is the, the whole nub of this. The relationship, by the way, will not be all that dramatically affected at all. 
because Boris Johnson, who will be Prime Minister, will want to appoint somebody else, obviously. Mm. The way is now clear for that. He knows the diplomatic team. He was Foreign Secretary. So he can either choose a diplomat he trusts and likes, which, you know, and they have the experience to do it, and they have the people to do it, or he can choose some political, to make some political appointment. Now, that's up to him. It's very important that whoever is appointed is known to have the confidence of the Prime Minister. I worked for Thatcher mm. and for John Major, and I, I had total backing from them. That makes a huge difference in Washington. If the Americans know that, they listen to you. Um, Lord Renwick, many thanks indeed for your time. I, I, I return to the second element of the question because Theresa May is now addressing the resignation of the American ambassador, the UK ambassador to Britain in the House of Commons.